So today I want to sort of informally talk about somebody that can be divisive, sometimes controversial, but regardless, I think he's a very important figure on the internet, and I want to give him his flowers, per se. Give credit where credit is due, and so on. This is a video about the internet's busiest music nerd, the needle drop, Anthony Fantano. I'm gonna do this in a few different sections, so first, the power of the critic. As somebody who has loved music and movies for my entire life, coming to an under understanding of what critics are and why they are so necessary was a big shift for me. If you want to look at it very simply, there are three general types of people when describing the ecosystem of any medium of art. There are creators, critics, and consumers. Creators make art, critics analyze art, and consumers support art. Without creators, there would obviously be no art being made. Without consumers helping support creators, they wouldn't have the resources to make art. So where does that leave critics? Critics are there, whether it be for music, movies, video games, whatever, to improve the art for everyone involved. They often get a bad reputation for overanalyzing or for just giving bad reviews to things that a lot of people like, but trust me, they are there to make that respective art form better. Critics exist to generate a detailed conversation about art. Without music critics, for example, the music industry and music listeners would be much less self-aware. It would be a medium with exponentially less progress. When critics give specific feedback based on cultural significance, music theory, and so on, that's how musicians can improve upon themselves, and it's also how audiences grow to demand a better quality product. And in the age of the internet, criticism is in this paradox of being both a dying and thriving idea. The traditional long-form article or book-length criticism is obviously on the decline. It's much harder to have your full-time profession be a music critic for a magazine, for example, than it was 20 years ago. And with less individuals being put on a pedestal for being the ones that have opinions about stuff, the internet has blown the door wide open and made everyone able to tell the world how they feel. And while it's fun logging onto Letterboxd and seeing this funny popular review of The Shape of Water, or me tweeting out this riveting eight-word review of Kids See Ghosts, it's not criticism. These two jokes aren't making movies and music better art forms. This detailed review of The Shape of Water from Mark Kermode and this 15-minute long review of Kids See Ghost from Fantano this is the criticism that has the power to make creators and consumers more aware, it can improve the art, and so on. I'm not saying that you need a large platform to make good work, but following and consuming the work of specific critics is half of what makes criticism so helpful. As he discusses in his piece on critics, Video Game Donkey explains that there should be a relationship between critic and consumer. Every critic's review should feel like an extension of their previous work. Fans of Donkey know that he hates role-playing games, he hates anime, and he hates turn-based combat. So when Dunkey gives a positive review of a role-playing anime turn-based combat game, and you trust Dunkey's opinion, you should probably check that game out. So in a time where short jokes and opinions from millions of people are becoming criticism in this fast-paced world, it is so vital that one of the biggest, most influential channels on YouTube is an old-school style critic that is staying true to conscientious work that can help musicians and music listeners alike. The only difference is that he's doing it in video form on YouTube instead of writing for a magazine or being on TV. So my main points here are critics do so much good for whatever medium they're critiquing, but that level of detailed, well-thought-out criticism is slowly dying, it's important to know the critic whose work you're consuming, and it's very valuable that somebody whose work is as detailed as Fantano's is one of the biggest creators on this platform. I think it's important to bridge the gap between consuming the work of a critic and still forming your own opinion. If a critic is trying to force you into agreeing with everything they say, they're not doing their job properly. Siskel and Ebert, Leonard Maltin, Ann Powers, Nelson George, Jenny Nicholson, whatever famous critic you enjoy and respect, they're just people like you and me. They don't have some higher power where objectively, their opinion is correct and yours isn't. However, their lives are dedicated to discussing music, film, whatever it may be, and most people can't say the same. 
Their opinions are respected because they make points that most people wouldn't think of. They've seen more movies, they've listened to more albums, they've studied this stuff. That's why you should hear them out, but that doesn't mean their opinion has to be your opinion too. With Fantano being such a huge name on YouTube and to be so widely watched by so many people that love music, and him being so open and transparent about saying, y'all know this is just my opinion, right? It teaches people to respect critics without feeling the need to be influenced by every word they say. And that's what this is ultimately all about, starting that conversation and improving the experience of that art form in one way or another. And listen, there is a huge difference between me discussing music with my friends that are really into music and put a lot of time into music as a hobby, and friends that are less into music. When I talk to the first group, the conversation doesn't really have a limit and it could go on for a long time. But when I talk to friends in the other group, there seems to be some kind of cap on how much they're physically able to say about a given song, musician, album, whatever. I like blank. I don't like blank. This is good. This is trash. That's pretty much all I can get out of a majority of the people in my life, which in turn would make me think that this this kind of person is the average music listener. You know what's missing from those statements? The why. I want you to tell me I like this because X, Y, and Z. How does it make you feel? How does it compare to other stuff you've listened to? I'm not saying that everybody needs to be super pretentious, but there's a difference between being an active music listener and being a passive music listener. And when that average music listener watches a Fantano video, they don't just know if he likes or dislikes like something, they know why. They know how he feels about the chord progressions on a specific track, how the lyrics in the chorus on a certain song made him take a second to think, how the flow of the album as a whole from one track to another moved him in a particular way. You may be saying, well, why do you care what people think of music or why they listen to it? And it's because I really think they're missing out. I don't think the this is good, this is bad people are getting everything out of music that they possibly could. Having these blank opinions feels like such a waste of art to me. Being an active music listener brings you more in touch with the art form as a whole, and watching the needle drop can help bring you to that point. When you watch his videos and you hear all the thousands of different opinions he has about music, you will 100% at one point or another get a hmm, I never thought about that type of moment. Or you might agree with a specific take, but you've just never been able to articulate that feeling before. So now moving forward, whenever you listen to an album, you can think, this did make me feel X, Y, and Z because of the lyrics or the tone of voice, specific production, whatever. So being a fan of Anthony Fantano and watching his stuff can not only help you get more out of what you're listening to, but subscribing to his channel will also show you what you've been missing out on. You think you listen to a lot of music, but then you scroll through the needle drop videos and you see a whole new world. Like I mentioned with getting to know a reviewer and what their taste is, if you like Fantano's stuff and he gives a great review to something you've never heard of, you should probably check that out. This can go for musicians on the rise, genres that you wouldn't normally check out, musicians you don't typically give the time of day, random stuff you're not familiar with, and so on. Watching him will introduce you to new music at one point or another, and that is a fact. And while there probably is a bit of a hierarchy in what he chooses to review, I think that's more of a representation of the music industry and not a slight on him. People want his takes on the most popular albums, and certain genres are more popular than others. But even with that caveat, he still puts out so many reviews of smaller musicians, stuff from less popular genres, and so on. And being that you can watch a review of the biggest album in the world one second, and a review of somebody with one one hundredth of their popularity the next, and he's talking about them with the same level of detail, that's pretty cool. This section is gonna be a little shorter than the others, but I just wanna compliment Fantano on how he handles the role that he is in. Anthony Fantano's influence can be borderline scary. There are constant jokes about how if he rates a certain album positively, suddenly every other music nerd in the world has a positive opinion of it too, and stuff like that. The man has well over 2 million subscribers, over 600 million video views, and his work is remarkably consistent. From my perspective, 
perspective, Fantano does not hold grudges. Certain musicians can go from being highly praised to absolutely torn apart, or they can get the worst possible score and eventually get the best possible score. It doesn't matter. Each album will receive the same clean slate, and that's very admirable. And I haven't really talked about this too much, but the guy is super entertaining. Along with his reviews being detailed and well thought out, people just like him as a human being. They enjoy his personality, and they get a kick out of seeing that personality flow into his reviews. That's another reason why he as a creator is so impressive. Fantano can ride that edge of talking about very specific stuff revolving around music theory, but it never gets too confusing for the average music listener. And in the end, like we've discussed, his attitude in his videos, his approach to his reviews, his passion for the art form, all of this combines to create a better template for how people, specifically young people, enjoy music or whatever art form is in their lives. And now, just for me personally, I would like to say thank you to Anthony. All of the things I've discussed so far about how critics can help people grow to be more active consumers with art, that's applicable to me and he's been a huge part of my journey with that. I really appreciate it. The Needle Drop is one of the main reasons why I started my own channel, and it's why this is what I currently do for a living. So for anyone that's ever thanked me for what I do, I think a lot of it goes back to him. I don't want this video to be some dramatic love letter, I don't want the impression to be that I think that he's perfect and nobody is, I just think that Fantano has done so much for music, criticism, and how people approach either of those things in this day and age. I want him to know that he's appreciated, I want to shine a positive light on him because far too many people try to drag him down for unnecessary reasons. Thank you to him, and thank you for watching this video. Hey, thank you for watching that video. Obviously, shout out to The Needle Drop, shout out Fantano, the link is in the description. If you want to support the channel, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. You can follow me on social media at RenshawHS. You can buy my merch, support my Patreon, and thank you again. I'll see you soon.